Hey, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. So what do we have here today? We've got an old Illinois pocket watch. But just before we talk about this pocket watch, I'd like to thank everyone for their input on who lights those torches in the uh, various movies I've seen over the years. Turns out there's a lot of individual guys that uh, light those torches. And I didn't know that these guys had that work. Um, but a lot of actors are doing part-time work lighting torches for studios when, uh, when it's required, when they have to walk into a cave and they need lighting. So thanks for all that input on the torch lighting. Um, I'm sure you're 100% accurate with that. So I'm JD again, uh, providing watch service. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, uh, JD watch service, see if I get this right again at uh, gmail.com, JD watch service at gmail.com and I'll see what I can do for you. Um, and today I'll talk, I'll be uh, uh, disassembling and cleaning this uh, vintage Illinois uh, pocket watch. Um, it's, a, it's a beast and a half. But before I do that, I bought some tools, tools. So I bought this little rack of tools. So these are screw cutters. These are cutters. So when you want to, uh, to basically cut in a hole in the plate so that you can install a screw that's level with the plate and it's holding a jewel setting, you use these beasties. Uh, there's a there's a bunch of them here. I haven't used these yet, but I'm sure they're wonderful. But these are cutters. In another video I made, um, I actually when I made the uh, the the setting for the uh, pocket watch, I think it was a Waltham pocket watch. Um, anyway, I made the setting, um, and I had to put two screws in place, and the setting was round, and I had to cut little half moons in to get those screws uh, set into the uh, into into the uh, setting and then set down into the plate. So I made my own cutter, but I found these on the tube of e eBay, not the YouTube, eBay. So I bought these, then I took this block. They came in a, a very nice container that looked like a medicine bottle. I think I tossed it out. Anyway, they came in this little medicine bottle container and I was like, this is crappy. So, <clears throat> so I just took a piece of hardwood um, and I drilled a gajillion holes in it. Uh, I lined them all up with my ruler and then drilled the holes to hold these things. So this is what the cutters look like up close. Let me grab one of these cutters. Cutters. And then I will see if I can... I'm going to just uh, zoom in on this. Hang on a sec. All right, there's the cutter up close. One of the cutters. Um, this part here would go into the threaded screw hole. And this part here would cut out where the head of the screw would be embedded into the plate. So that's the cutter there. So these are also tapered so they can fit in a tailstock of a lathe. So that's kind of convenient if you just have a plain tailstock. And you can just throw that in. It's probably got an M something taper in it, M3 taper. Um, and there's various sizes of these things. So depending on the screws that you need to embed. So I'm hoping that I've got the right sizes. Um, to do this and there's another cutter here. Let me just put this guy back here. I grabbed um, Get action shot of me putting it back here. Hang on a second uh, Come on get back in there and I've got so that's these cutters and I got some other crazy cutters here so this here uh, Cutter I believe is just for making a uh, starting hole Not sure you guys can comment on this. I'm not an expert on these cutters um, and I've got a whole whack of these things here, which are also cutters. Um, and they've got a round side and a flat side. So this is the cutting side. Obviously just made for cutting a hole, and I've got a whole whack of those. There's a, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those. Um, and then there's these style cutters, which are for cutting as well. And they've got two flat sides. I'm assuming those are for, those edges are for cutting as well. And I don't know what those would be for unless they're just for bigger, bigger screw holes. And then I have an odd, an odd cutter. This is an odd cutter here. And again, if anybody can give me some information on what these cutters are used for. I, and then it came with a taper. It came with a little block here that's tapered for the lathe. So you can put the cutter in there and then put this into the, into the lathe. Um, so, but these are the ones that I really wanted. And these guys here which I thought okay this is this is good this is I had to make a lot of these so so uh, this should do the trick 
I will try those out at some point in time. I just may want to try them out to see how well they work. Um, so those are the cutters. So once again, a uh, whole, whole whack of cutters. I'm hoping that these will work for some of the work I have to do. Um, if they don't, I'll end up having to make a cutter. But the cool part of this is I, I told you I just reti retired um, and I took all my credit cards, or not my credit cards, my business cards, and I said I need to make a top for this cutter thing. Eh? So let me just zoom out a bit here. This is my zoom. You can hear my zooming. It's a manual camera, but it's very good. So I needed to make a box. So these are my business cards on the inside. I won't show you what the business I worked for, but but I just sort of cut one card here, one card in the back, made a roof on it, glued it all together, and I used my watch crystal glue. Then I went downstairs and I into my Frankenstein lab and I painted the crap out of it, and it fits perfect over this. So now it gives it some protection, and I cut it down there though. So that was the best way I could do it, and the cutters themselves keep it up. But then my wife went on a trip and she said, hey, why didn't you just cut a half moon here to be able to grab the base? I'm like, where were you when I was doing this? So that's that's it. And I went downstairs and I had an old red car. And I used my red car paint and I just sprayed the crap out of this. So now it's uh, reddish. So that should do the trick and it's well glued. So that's my cutter story. So now over to this wonderful pocket watch. Let me have a look at this. All right, this is my first look at this wonderful old Illinois pocket watch. So I'm going to have a look at this thing. It looks like a... It's a size 18. Um, it came in a box with a key. There's a key. Um, and from a guy named Robert. I'll just use first names here, but it has no crystal. Pod of crystal. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenge to find. I don't think I'll be able to find the original thick glass crystal for this. So, um, And let me just flip it over here. It's a probably silveroid uh, case. It says coin silver in the inside, as you can see. So it's a coin silver case. There's a case number. Um, it's got a couple of repair scratches on the inside, so it's been repaired a few times. It's got a nice little dust cover here. This case looks like it's having a hard time closing. I'm not sure how to resolve that. I may have to do a lot of Googling and figure that out, because if the case was actually taken like this and then bent backwards, that would have bent the metal, which is going to be a little tricky to try to, you know, put that back. So this is this is okay though. This is a dust cover, pretty heavy. It's like I, they had very heavy dust back in the day, I guess. And there's the movement. So it's a nice old movement. It's, uh, looks like it's I'm not sure how many joules this thing is. Or let's see if it says it on it. Oh, I got to hit the camera with my hat. Hit the camera with your hat, you fool. So this is a, oh, I'm getting in there close. Springfield, Illinois, that's a typical of this. Um, Illinois Watch Company, it doesn't say how many jewels, but it looks like there's probably at least 15 here. Um, I cannot see the jewel count, but there is a, there is a serial number and I'll look that up at the jewel count. The balance staff seems to be in place and not rattling around, which is, would be really nice if, it, if that's the case. Um, it's also a key wound uh, pocket watch and that's the key that's on the box that I got. It's it's taped to the box and I got to you know, free that up. So so that's the uh, the key for the pocket watch. Um, it's actually moving around a bit so let me just look at get that out of it. I was told that it was overwound which means that it was just wound and because of the gummy nation, nature of this. Well, let me look at this here. So as I turn this key, um, there seems to be no movement at all. Oh, no, there is a bit. Yeah, there we go. I'm getting a bit of action here and I'm getting a bit of ticking, which is perfect. So it's not ticking that well, but it is ticking. That's nice to see. So I'll now have to relieve the pressure of this thing. So. I'm going to disassemble this um, this morning um, and clean it up, hopefully reassemble it and get it working again. That would be very nice if it's going to be that easy. You never know because uh, usually when I do this, it starts out looking easy and it ends up being hard. So so that's it. That's the Illinois pocket watch I'll be working on. Um, i got to figure out my left and right on this camera, right? Left, right, center, whatever. So it's a, it's a nice, nice old pocket watch. Uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure how well this crown works uh, for setting the time, uh, but I'm assuming I can pull it out and set the time, but we'll see later on how well that works. So, And the watch just stopped, which is uh, interesting. Maybe just ran out of power. Yeah, there we go. It's running again. I gave it a couple of small winds with the key here. But. So I'll take this apart this morning. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit of work on the case as well because it's pretty beat up and I'm going to see if I can uh, restore the case a bit and I'm going to figure out how to do how to deal with that hinge um, on this case. I'll, I'm definitely going to have to ask somebody how to deal with that sort of, sort of a, somebody took this case and just heaved it back a lot and so now it's, it's sort of bending down. I, I might have to take the pin out on the side. Uh, again I'm not a case guy but I do play one on TV, so we'll see how well I do with this job. So, so there you go. So let's start the disassembly of this watch. So I think the first thing I want to do here is just take this balance, this balance cock out, because I don't want this to be in the way. So I'm just going to unscrew this and then lift it straight up, um, and that might prevent any uh, damage I may have here that, from this. So. So this, uh, these are nice blued screws. This thing is in so tight. It's a, this is an old watch, so it's it's going to be a bit of a job to get this thing done. There we go. That's in there, and I'm going to just see if this lifts up. If it doesn't lift up, then uh, it, perhaps I'm going to need to uh, do other things first. So I just want to make sure that. Uh, Let's see if this this lifts up. Um, might it might come right up? If it doesn't, I'm just going to put the screw back in. Try something else. Yeah, let's just wedge my screwdriver in right around the corner here. Sometimes this will just lift right up. There we go. So that's lifting up there. And just fine, fine work. Especially when you're looking at a vintage piece like this. And what I want to make sure, I want to get this out of here. So if there's any funny business going on, this balance and the balance staff the balance everything is not being compromised by any funny business so let me rest it right on here my super duper zero pressure balance tack here we go so that's it's being rested on this balance tack here and so there's no tension on the spring at all here so i think that's the best place to put it for now um, and now I've got this out of the way, out of the way. So now that this is out of the way, I can remove. I've got the um, my number 58 holder here. That'll just probably see if I can eyeball size it to the. Uh, you can press the button and make it bigger. That's how you do it. And kind of eyeball size it to the movement. And then um, when I take it out, I can put it right directly onto this holder, and that'll be good. And uh, so, flip this over. Um, I need to open this case here, and I can just crack this open. I use my my cheaper opener, not my expensive one, but the expensive one would probably work too in this. So, so there we go. There's the cheaper opener. Now the question is, can I pop these hands off right now? and then I don't have to worry about them later. It's funny, there's a little tiny hole right here. I don't know what that's for. And a little tiny hole right here. I don't know what that's for. And it, probably there's pegs in there that allow that align the movement. So I'm going to try to to um, pull pull out on this to uh, to see if I can set the time cuz this is the time should be set that way. So and I'm not sure if this, this is going to work or not because this thing seems to be pretty stiff. I think the guy that gave it to me said that this doesn't work. 
So I don't know what the story is there. So I may have to take the hands off without without doing that, which is a different job altogether. So let me just uh, let me think here. Remove the movement first, or take off the hands first. What should I do? This is an old, old pocket watch. I don't normally work on these old, old ones. I got a couple I worked on years ago that were uh, pretty vintage, but uh, there's a, looks like there's a case screw here and there's no case screw on the other side. And that would mean that you take out this case screw and the movement um, slides out sideways, I'm hoping. Like it goes down and then out if I, if I loosen that case screw. Uh, but I, I don't like the fact that I've got the hands in the way and I can't actually move the hands. So I'm going to try to take out the movement. And if I can take the movement out, then I can use just a bench key to remove the hands. So let's try that. I'll close this up a little bit and then go to the other side and see if I can get in here. Plus these, these are tricky because they're all at an angle. There we go. And there's... Um, these are half moon screws, which means that if I just move it to the half moon position, um, then I just put a little bit of pressure on this. It should, it should, uh, should move down, downward. This is a pretty old watch, though, so let me just see if I can put a little bit of pressure on this to pop it out. That isn't stiff, man. That is in stiff. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do here. Let me think. It's just a matter of assessing and reassessing. So, let me... I think I pushed the wrong way, actually. I'm going to push from the back, you idiot. There we go. There we go. I pushed from the front. Oh my god, I didn't push that hard because I was worried about that beautiful crystal. So there we go. So that's how it com comes out um, and is now out. Now I'm going to have a look at the, uh, the winding mechanism where that is. So where is the winding mechanism? <laughs> it doesn't look like there is any. So as I rotate this around, I for some reason can't see any place where you can actually where this stem or crown crown and stem go into you can see the crown and stem in the back there let me just angle this properly so you can see them there it is there just sort of angled that's the uh, crown and the stem on the end and it looks like it's got like a, a knurled end, which is strange, but I can't actually see any place where this thing is wound. <laughs> All right, this is weird. So the question is, did somebody put a dust cover on this thing? And the dust cover is covering up the place where this is wound. That is the question I have, because I this is a this is a dust cover here, but there's no place to wind it. So this is why the guy gave me the pocket watch because he couldn't wind it. This here little, I'm familiar with these. These little, this little switch here, just takes the pressure off the mainspring usually. So the question is, if I just put a uh, screwdriver in there again and see if I can wedge this dust cover off, will this expose more stuff here? Because this is crazy, cray z. Yeah, there's a little screw here, but that screw is to hold in the uh, to hold in this here. I don't know. This is weird. This is very weird. Um, maybe the key. This doesn't make any sense because there's a crown in this thing that turns, and maybe Bun Special can help me here. I think he does more of these really old watches than I do. So there's a screw there, right here on the top and then there's a screw here is that the same screw 
Let me see if I go around in a circle and put my keep my hand there. No, there's two screws on, one, on each side. And it looks like this cover is made for these screws to cover these screws. So just wedging this up just a bit here to see what happens. So this comes up. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Sorry I'm not an expert in these 1850 pocket watches, but just going to work my way around here in a circle and see if I can just edge that dust cover up. So it's kind of obvious where the dust cover needs to go when it goes back, so I'm not too concerned there. There we go. So dust cover is off. There it is there. Um, but again, and it looks like it's made for this watch. So the question is, there's the, <laughs> the question is how the hell do you want, or how the hell do you set the time on this thing? Do you just grab the hands and move them around? I don't know. This is weird. I'm gonna have to ask somebody before I fart with it that way, though. So um, I can still disassemble it, no problem. But I'm just very curious how the heck you set the time on it. Because there was no, basically there was nothing there. Just if I move these hands a bit, what happens? No, I don't think those are meant to be moved. It, uh, I'm baffled. I am totally baffled. And I know that this here has nothing to do with setting the time. So if I look on the inside of this watch, here I see all the gears and type of escapement it has. Um, I see I see no apparent winding mechanisms for setting the time. There is a gear on the inside here uh, that looks like it's attached right through. You can see that there. It's attached through to the uh, through to the center gear or center wheel, right? But oh my God! Now, maybe, okay, look, I'm looking at the top here, and I'm seeing this little square post on the top. And I'm thinking you turn that square post to set the time. Now, let's just put this in the movement holder for a second, nice and carefully. Um, and again, the number 58 movement holder, what a great movement holder. I'm going to leave it all together like this, and turn it this angle here so the plate for the mainspring sits on the top here and then I'm going to close it down a bit and if this key actually sets the time I'd be impressed because that means it's not cased right oh my god so there you go the key goes on the top, it fits absolutely perfectly here. And you turn the key to set the time on this watch. I give up, man. Another thing learnt. So, so if that's the case, I should be able to turn this key. I'm going to tighten this up just a bit here so I can look at it sideways. I should be able to turn the key here into the right position. I'm just going to make sure there's no stress on any other gears here. So let's turn this. Seems to work. Seems to work with this key. And I'm just going to group the hands up so I can remove them. <laughs> I didn't think there was. Uh, obviously, I got to do more work on really, 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 really old pocket watches, but. I didn't think there, that these old pocket watches had a key on them to uh, set the time, so. So you make sure this is focused properly here. Like that, okay. Now we should be able to take these hands off using my big hand pliers that I got a little while ago. These guys here, because they're huge, right? And put some pressure this way. Um, even though I don't like putting pressure on this old crystal. The other thing I could do is actually get one of my old hand removers and see if that works. So let me pause for a second. Alrighty, I'm officially back from my round trip to the post office to return a 
pocket watch I fixed to Ed. So, all good, man, all good. I think my mic's up too high. Anyway, so I'm just going to take the hands off here. Hands off. Because you can't do anything on a watch with the hands on. So, just pop these babies off. Nice and easy. And I'm just putting everything aside here. And like I said many, many, many times when you work on a pocket watch or a watch, just move the parts out of the way because they'll end up getting stuck in your hand. Um, and then it's a whole different ball game. So I want to remove the, um, the face here to get it out of the way as well. I should be able to clean this off with Rodico. Um, I may do a little work on it right now because it's pretty dirty. And I think just a, some sweeping with Rodico will uh, do wonders on this. And I might as well do it while the, uh, while the watch is all solid here. So, so there's no... Try to reduce any pressure on the, on the face here. When you're doing work on it, I had to take the second hands off in a second. I just uh, want to clean the top of this here a bit, just a tad, a t a d. Now, oh oh oh, let's take the second hands off while I'm in town here. And this is tricky because I usually use a little tiny piece of yellow. Let's see if I have a piece of yellow. Yes, I do. So this is what I use. To remove the second hand. That was that wasn't good. <laughs> just want to I just want to scoop this underneath just a bit. I don't want to bend anything, so. But I do want to protect the face, and I think this should just come straight up. And try to have equal pressure here because it's sitting on a on a pivot on the end, right? So I just pick that up with my rotico and put that out of the way there we go now um, i'm just going to go do like i said a, just a general cleaning with the rotico this stuff is amazing it's uh, amazing it's watchmaker magic and the rotico it removes as you can see it's removing a whole lot of aging here which is kind of cool um you can as well if you basically shape the, the end of the Rodico up. I picked up some paper here. Shape the end of the Rodico up. And this is like a not a super clean piece, but it doesn't matter with the face as long as there's no metal in there. Um, and you leave it like that. If there's pressure on the face, the Rodico will bend. So you're not, you're not applying pressure that would crack the face of the watch, which is nice, right? So, so that's, that's a cool feature of using Rodico to do this but but do it gently and as well and you're not going to apply too much undue pressure on the on the face of the watch as well so just and the the I, I, I read a I was I was reading a, a, a blog or something from the uh, watchmaker guys and some dude threw his watch into an ultrasonic clean uh, cleaner and then all the letters ran away so all the numbers and lettering and everything on his watch just disappeared. So when you're using Rodico around the, uh, the seconds uh, dial here, um, be careful not to go deep into that hole because you can bend the, uh, the pivot for the fourth wheel. So, or fifth wheel, fourth wheel. They need to rename all that. So you don't want to bend the pivot, so you got to be very careful going around there. So I just tip, I just usually go right around the edge, and I don't want the rod rodico to stick in that hole at all, because there is a chance of it grabbing that that pivot on the end, and then all kinds of crap could happen. So let's take a look at the edges here. I can see a little piece of something there that I might be able to remove. Um, and for the age of this watch, the face is in pretty darn good condition, considering how old it is. I'll, I'll have to look it up again later, but I think this is 18-something, 1880 maybe, because it's key-wound. It's a key-wound watch, um, and that was way back. So, yeah, there's a bunch of dirt in the sub-dial. Also, you don't want to press too 
hard on the subdial because the subdial is actually soldered into place. And you could pop it off. So there you go, look at that. Super, super, super. And now, now, before the mass has ended here, I, it's time for me to hit my hand on the camera. So I want to remove the, uh, I want to remove the dial. So there's little tiny screws on the edge here that I gotta see if you can see that. I gotta get access to the screw that should let me pop the dial up. So I'll loosen that. I don't want to take it out all the way because I don't want to lose the screws. Not that I'd lose them on my mat, but I just don't want to uh, to make sure you guys are still seeing something here. It's the land of close-ups, man. Land of close-ups. So it looks like there are two dial screws, maybe three, not sure. Then one right here. Is that three? I don't know about this one here. I loosened, I think I loosened. No, that I didn't loosen that one. That's the one that holds the uh, dust cover on, I think. It complements the dust cover. So let me see if this just lifts off. There we go. Let's look at the other end. So there's the other end of the ceramic dial. And it's soldered into place right here. You can see the soldering marks and all the dial feet are in there. And those are sizable dial feet. Of course, if I had a dial foot problem, as I've showed in another video, I can just fix that dial foot. That's what I, that's what I can do, no problem. Because I've got my dial foot soldering machine, which is a in crazy device that every time I've used it I feel like I'm gonna get electrocuted and it came from Vietnam and the guy sent it to me and it came in excellent condition and it works perfectly so and I'm just gonna take off a couple of components here that this here is is the uh, our wheel and then the minute wheel doesn't go too deep into that peg that's for sure um, now the cannon pinion, I'm not sure if I want to remove that cannon pinion once I get all this apart. So, because that would, that might cause me other problems. But before I do any of that, I'm going to screw these screws back in a bit so I don't lose them. That way, I remember when I put the face back on that the screws are screwed back in a bit. So, but this dial, this watch number 58 if you can find one on ebay the number 58 myers movement holder is a piece of artwork because the thing just grabs a watch that so that it's never going to come off again and let me see here okay yeah now this this uh center wheel here is attached uh, directly straight down so, so you're not this is not your normal cannon pinion uh, because you're not using a winding mechanism where you would wind here and the cannon pinion would provide friction to allow it to move as you're setting the watch and to and to not be moving when you're winding the watch so it's not a normal cannon pinion so I may leave that in place for cleaning and not not strip that off little nervous about removing something that I uh, might not be able to uh, fix later so as well this this here these springs here that are from 18 something I can clean these in place I mean I'm probably breaking making some watchmakers nervous here but I can clean this in place um, and again not be too concerned about busting this spring I may or may not I'll, I'll, I'll see what what happens here um, and this is just used for the click spring for the mainspring barrel right so which is this uh, cap here is holding down that mainspring barrel um, so I will take the barrel off from the front but the Myers movement holder um, it grab these little edges here as you can see like right there they grab that movement so you don't have any issues uh, with uh, with respect to its it falling out when you kind of grab the movement holder and move the watch around so I just squeeze that in place just a bit and it's this is sprung so when you when you screw it in you're actually just tightening a spring because it's still it's still sprung and will still go out because if you can't see this here but if I press this it goes in a bit 
it's a sprung movement holder so so that's that and then I'm gonna replace remove these screws and just tuck the barrel out right now so I'll just grab this here and <sighs> screws that are in have been in since 18 something that one's stuck right in place there 18 oh something I should look this guy up so when I talk about him I know what I'm doing so this is uh, uh, again um, and again if I can find a blind spot on the side to edge this up I will and that way you're not scratching the, uh, the movement at all and there we go there's my blind spot I wound this up just a bit so and again these little tiny screws on top holding this in place I can leave those where they are um, you have the risk when you're using when you're re repairing or doing work on a very old vintage pocket watch of of damaging the uh, the components now there's a click spring in here I'm gonna I'm not sure whether I can relieve pressure on this click spring here um, whether I need to but uh, there's there's usually this here little thingamajobby here is what actually takes the pressure off the mainspring so if I just pull it like this it's going to take pressure off the mainspring but what I want to do is is make sure I've got the key in place while I'm doing that that way um, the mainspring just doesn't spin around like crazy right so put the key in place here on this side and then I should be able to unclick this so just pull this back with the key in place I don't want to push this too hard either because if I just put a little pressure on it like that like this then I can push the key over with my fingernail another great use for the fingernail like so and that's releasing the mainspring and now I can walk the mainspring back with the key and there we go so that's zero pressure on the mainspring when I did that so that's that so that's relieving the pressure from the mainspring had I just pulled on this there's a chance of this breaking there's a chance of the mainspring breaking although I might actually uh, replace this mainspring I'll measure it and see if I can get one close to it um, it didn't seem to have a lot of power but but I will be taking the mainspring out of the barrel here a little later and doing some work on that too so that's that uh, and these are full plate pocket watches which are a real pain in the friggin Batinsky I'll just say it like that so um, they're full plate which means to get it all the components back in place on these things is a real pain in the ass so I gotta tell you it's maybe not worth the money it cost to actually repair it <laughs> to, to actually put those plates back I've tweaked those a million times just to let you see how much dirt is in these uh, in these uh, holes let me show you this there we go so there's the um, some of the jewels and they're muddied right up so this one here I'm looking at it's got tons of crap in it this one also has tons of crap in it so there's a <clears throat> as Led Zeppelin used to say there's a whole lot of dirt whole lot of dirt that was the kool-aid song I want kool-aid baby anybody got kool-aid sorry about that all right now I'm just gonna take off the this main this evil main plate here and uh, just lift this straight up it should just come straight up without a problem and I can have a look at the uh, pivots and pinions of the watch to make sure I don't have any pivot and pinion issues so uh, and you'll you'll see that the the, the uh, cover for the mainspring or the for the plate for the mainspring is actually integrated in here and holds down this plate as well so so it's dual plate action and this might come right up I think I'm, I'm going to need to just put a screwdriver under the edge here and uh, just trying to make sure this is tight a little bit so no, nothing falls uh, I just pick a very small screwdriver and just right under the edge so I got to get in close so hopefully I don't hit the camera again with my head 
my head gets in the way of this work all the time. Put my finger on top. There we go. So this, by doing this, I make sure that I lift it straight up. And if I don't, if I don't lift it straight up, there's a chance of breaking a pivot on the end of one of the wheels. So there we go. And just because I'm, look at that. So this is so gummed up, one of the wheels actually stuck on here. So I'll take a couple of photographs of this. And the reason I do that is just so I don't have to think about putting it back together again. I know how to do it and there's no issue. So there's a photograph there and there's another photograph there. And also um, the, as you can see, the um, escapement is stuck in here so that was gummed up man man and this was probably gummed up too and you got to pull it straight up so let me just show you here just move my camera over just a bit here and is it focused I don't know I think I'll make my first video showing how it's stripped down and then the second video will just be uh, cleaning it, I guess. So there, take that out, put that over there with the uh, other stuff. And I got to check all these jewels. I will have to remove this jewel here, this cap, to clean it. And there's a small mark right on the edge here where th theoretically you can put a needle and pull the cap up, but I've never successfully been able to do that. The better way is to just push it from the other side out. When I'm looking at it, I'm going to examine all these jewels and see if any of them are cracked. I'm hoping they're not, because if they're cracked and worn, and I've got to replace a jewel, that's nasty. So, and I can't believe the amount of crud in these jewel holes. <laughs> they're like crud central. So, uh, so yeah, patent pin, patent. Patent, pinion, not general patent, just patent. So that's that. <clears throat> and then these these gears should come straight up, uh, but they're oh, it could be muddied up as well. No, that one came up. That's good. Let's put everything out of the way, and this one should come straight up as well. There we go. And it doesn't look there's no jewels in the bottom, so it's not jeweled through the bottom. So it's probably a 15 jewel pocket watch. Now this is the one here that's got the uh, gear that goes all the way through to the bottom and through to the other side. This is the one I do not want to remove. I, I know I could do it, but I think there's danger, Will Scarlet, in doing that. So I'm going to clean that with lighter fluid in place, in situ, as they say. And that should be fine like that. Um, because I don't want, if this was my watch, I might do it, but if someone else's watch, uh, it's, it's a big, it's a bit of a risk, right? And I don't want to take that risk. I don't want the gentleman whose watch I am fixing to worry about that. But, on the other hand, if I, I gotta put this down below, because it's, it's holding nice here because of the legs here, but uh, let me just reorganize the camera a bit here. Let me see, where is this darn camera pointing? pointing right there so and we do that so so I, I am going to remove the uh, the plate for the mainspring here and make sure I get the right size screwdriver to do that uh, wrong size screwdriver just causes all kinds of problems with the screws it's funny the screwdrivers turning but the screw isn't <laughs> nice I think I will get this screwdriver here to do this see if I can remove this plate there we go the right tool for the right job that's what they say uh, spun that around like a pro and I'll remove this one here there and like I said before you just keep a boatload of pressure on the screw but not pressing down too much because you can ruin something right and you do not want to strip strip the threads on the uh, where this goes in so I should just this just should pop right up 
or maybe not. This thing's been in there for like a hundred thousand years. Oh, it's coming up. It's raising the dead. There we go. It's a vampire system here. Like that. And I checked the direction. I'm going to take a picture of that too because of the direction of the, uh, the teeth. And I know I won't screw it up, but it's so easy just to take your iPhone, take a picture, and then, <clears throat> and then when you, if I remove this, can I lift it straight up? Yep. Remove that, lift it straight up, and then I think I will take this spring out, even though I was reluctant to do it. I think I will anyway. I don't want to have to make a new one. Because uh, that's, I'm able to do that as well, but it's a lot of filing to make a new spring like this. So you don't want to have to do anything intentional. So there we go. It's out. Oot, as they say, and then this can come straight up and out. And then I think, do I bother with this thing here? Yeah, yeah I might as well take it out too. What the heck? Eh? I grouped the screws with the parts too, so I don't have issues trying to figure out which screw goes with which part and when I'm doing the cleaning. And I clean by hand, which is uh, the old school way of cleaning. This here is just fitting in here, so it's it may need some coaching or coaching out. There we go. And I did take a photo, and the lever is on the top part. So grab this lever and put it with its buddy, the screw, the buddy. So the only thing I'm not taking out is that center wheel, because I don't want to get in a situation where the wheel is bent or anything. So this is a advice to new watchmakers. Don't mess with that center wheel when it's not your typical uh, can opinion. So the guy that asked me to clean his watch, I was re very reluctant to do the work on this because I don't do a lot of really old ones um, and it's difficult. So I was like, yeah, I don't know about this, but he did some begging and I'm a sucker for beggars. So I decided I'd do it anyway. So, so if I just go back a bit with the camera, you guys can just see all the parts spread out here. So I think I'll end this video with this part here. Uh, the next thing I do is going to mix my, uh, use my lighter fluid and start cleaning. I got to clean this jar. It's dirty. This needs to be cleaned. Um, I could throw the main plate into an ultrasonic cleaner, but I'd rather do this by hand. So clean it by hand, peg out the holes. I do have to go take this top plate here and just see if the jewels have any issues at all. If they're going to cause a problem at all. And if they don't, that's great, because they're all burnished in, which is a pain in the butt. So, yeah, they're burnished in jewels, and there's not much material there. So I'm hoping they don't have any issues. So, and I have to take out this jewel here after. After I do the cleaning, I'll take this jewel out. I might be able to peg it in place, though, because it, I can get right through there with, uh, with my peg wood. So I don't, I don't think I'll remove it. I think it's good where it is, man. It is good where it is, man. Man, a man. Yeah, not bad. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching my video. Um, peace out, and I'll catch you on the flip flop. See you next time. All right, I lied. I'm back. <laughs> One thing I wanted to do before I left the earth here is take out this mainspring. Um, and again, pictures required. Take a picture of the mainspring so I know which way everything goes. Right, this mainspring does work. Um, it looks like it has a T bar on it, right, which is nice. Uh, I just have to pop, pop the cap up, and I should just be able to put a screwdriver in like that. And then I may need, need a smaller one, but you should just be able to pop the cap up with a screwdriver. Uh, come on, cap. Don't cause me issues. I think I'll pop it up and come back. Other way of doing it is to push down on this side here, and then the cap pops up. I need to get in dirty and close on this to get the to
to get this cap up. Yeah, it looks like there's enough space there so to get under. So you just get your screwdriver underneath and then rotate. So I think I'm going to break the screwdriver. I don't want to do that. I just I'll have to put new blades on it. Let me switch to the, the ye old yellow. It looks like it's coming up. So you should just be able to do that. And there you go. Pop that up and then run your screwdriver around the edge. And I'm just going to peek in here to see how this sits into the watch. So yeah, this is uh, the mainspring here sits in the watch. It's pretty dirty. And I think I got to coil it the other way to undo it like that. And then you pull that out. That's the uh, cap. And have a look at that thing there. That's the mainspring there. And I'm having a little peek at how this is going in. So it's not no big problem here. And just turn it in the opposite direction as, as, as it's hooked in. And it should, it should, uh, should come out no problem. There we go. So that's the, uh, this is the mainspring. This is the uh, jubby doohickey. Um, <laughs> I had to use that term at least once. It's the center blah, blah, blah of the jobby do hickey. So to take the mainspring out, so this looks like a T mainspring. Um, it looks uh, pretty old. I'm not sure if I have one of these this size because I might have an old mainspring that might fit this. But I may order a new one from, uh, I'll go, go to Cousins UK and measure this thing, right? And if I just get my screwdriver under here to pull this up, like that and get my fingernail underneath right that didn't work I'm gonna just move my camera around so you can see me farting around with this so so and then just walk that around like so and then once I get to a certain position I can walk it out it's, it's a little bit dangerous but I got that's why humans have two eyes because if you lose one you still got one remaining right so the same reason you got two hands and I don't think it's why we have two feet though or two legs because we got to walk on these damn things so so everything is redundant you got dual redundancy in your body and you didn't even know it so you don't have two hearts but you do have two kidneys because you pee a lot <clears throat> so this mainspring looks like it's set this is called a set mainspring because it's been in there for a billion years so it went in like this and I got to take another picture of that because when I wind it back I want to make sure it goes in the right way so so there we go and as you can see it's a a T there's a T on the end a T junction mainspring and I'll measure what I do is I'll measure the thickness of the mainspring and that's the strength of it right then I'll measure the width of it, and that's how it sits into the barrel, and the width has got to be absolutely accurate to get the barrel back together. And then I'll measure the barrel uh, diameter here, and that barrel diameter will give me virtually the length of that mainspring that I need to buy, right? So, because I don't want to have to stretch this out and see if I can measure the length. So if you measure the barrel diameter, the, the mainspring should fit into one-third of the barrel when it's completely coiled in so it's, it fits into one-third of the barrel I believe that's the yeah, it's about one-third of the barrel and uh, and so all you need is the diameter of the barrel to, to, on the inner diameter of the barrel um, and then you can order a mainspring directly from Cousins UK and they get a little calculator and you just put those numbers in and then a the mainspring pops out and then you're all set so there it is done and as you could see earlier uh, the I did some a little bit of work on that and it looks actually really good so I'll look at that again a little later but there's no need other than some basic Rodico to clean it if you use any abrasive cleaners or anything like that those letters or the Roman numerals could go away and that would really be a, a shame now the case is a whole other story here so I'll get the uh, I'll get this watch I'll get I'll work on the case while uh, while the parts are coming in for the watch I'll be able to put it all together um, to a point and then the re I'll reassemble it all to a point and then I'll just wait for that mainspring to put that back, back together and I will 
wait for what else and I got to clean I missed one part here I got to clean the hairspring the balance in the hairspring and the jewel the upper the upper jewel on this balance as well so there it is there so so I got to clean this up as well I've done that plenty of times but uh, that's a matter of, of disassembling the balance ew, ew, ew. from like just taking the hairspring out boot taking the hairspring out uh, let me just do this take a picture of that right and I'm gonna have to yeah I'll have to pop the jewel up out of this here too in order to get access to the uh, to this so well while I'm here while I'm here well I am here it's just close up here on this thing here it's just close up here doopy doo doopy doo friendly neighborhood spider-man Spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. Hey there, there goes the Spider Man. Now, if I can actually use this in the loosen the screw that holds the stud in place, and then just poke the stud down like that, and then be very cautious when you're working around that hairspring. And there it is, there. So now I can take this jewel setting out and I'll examine that again under my uh, stereo microscope to make sure I don't have any jewel issues and then this baby I'll leave this sitting nicely in here um, and I'll, I'll clean this in place in lighter fluid and I might use my dippermatic well I actually didn't do it properly but I might use the dippermatic but but it, it, I could have, I should have done it while I was still attached to the balance cock. But I can throw that into lighter fluid, and it will not impact the shellac that is holding the impulse jewel in place. Because there is the impulse jewel and the roller table. It's a single roller, and it looks like the pivots are pretty darn good on this thing. So I can throw that in and do all that work. I think I need to build one more device that just holds this like that like just like that where I don't have to hog this whole device up just for this so so anyway so that's out now and I can also throw that in lighter fluid and and I might use I've got a cap with some stuff on the bottom that I might use to clean that so, so there we go it's all apart now let me just go back again and show you the mess show you the mess show me the money so there we go fully disassembled and it's almost 12 o'clock I gotta go eat some lunch you don't want to be hungry while you're doing watch work because you have will have the uh, you'll have the urge to actually eat the watch not a good thing anyway thanks for watching my video again if you want to send me some work I'm at uh, jdwatchservice at gmail.com no problem I do this as a hobby it's not really a revenue generating exercise for me it's just some fun um, but I do take care when I do it and I usually not usually I usually 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 re, uh, send back a very good product um, some of these watches have been extremely challenging over the years and you know when I've had to make jewels and do some crazy stuff but this one looks like it might be not, not, not be too bad what we shall see thanks a lot signing out finally bye bye